Hello, The Darkness 344 here, and today I'll be basically starting a series, Combinational Logic Concepts, where we'll be covering some um, just, I guess, standard combinational logic circuits, as well as some core concepts that you really should be, well, that you should know, and it, it should help out these, these videos. So this first episode will basically just be a bit of an introduction about what the series will contain, and how I'm going to structure the videos and I'll be covering logic gates in this video because this is just well I guess the first video and that's probably where um, you should start off with actually knowing how the different logic gates work and also being able to implement them into a game like Minecraft. So for this combinational logic um, series I'm planning to do so cover several things like uh, just all your logic gates, boolean algebra, Connor maps and that kind of stuff how you can actually like derive circuits and equations from uh, like truth tables and stuff so we'll be covering truth tables and all this uh, will just basically let you um, instead of having to ask help for like a very specific circuit where there may not be a tutorial you'll be able to um, create the logic for it create a truth table um, simplify it and actually just build the circuit design the circuit and build it and this will mean that well, if, if you're very comfortable with being able to just design very custom circuits, it'll make making a computer or just any sort of component a whole lot more easier because you actually know how the fundamental logic works instead of just the component on themselves. So while a computer is made up of just main components, so like an AOU, some registers, and well, your ROM maybe if it's Harvard, um, each of these components will... Um, are made up of more components which all use different um, well, logic gates and different uh, techniques uh, so that they all work and part of understanding how a computer works um, all together is understanding how each of the fundamental components work and why um, we do it this way. So the series will just cover loads of logic and I'm also possibly considering um, doing a sequential logic series as well um, so yeah, um, that will just cover more sequential circuits as well. So, combinational logic concepts. First of all, we have to understand what the word combinational means. Well, combinational logic is where, um, well, a combinational logic circuit is a circuit whose outputs only depend on the current state of the inputs. So think of this like a function. Um, typically, if we put in some inputs, um, we are always going to get the same output. Uh, there will never be a time in combinational logic where you put in some inputs, it will give an output, then you put in those same inputs and it will give a different output. Because, well, that would be sequential logic or a different type of logic. A combinational is, well, the output uh, depends on the combination of your inputs. So, for instance, this would be like a, a full adder circuit. Um, whatever inputs you put in, it will always give the same outputs. So what is Boolean logic, uh, which will be what we're covering into this video? Well, Boolean logic is a type of algebra where the results can only be calculated as true or false. So this means you only have um, two states, which are true or false, or sometimes a one or a zero, one being true, zero being false. And this also allows us to use um, base two or binary um, as a number system uh, to calculate Boolean logic. This just makes it easier for stuff like computers use Boolean logic because you only have two possible states and it just simplifies um, circuits down and well this is pretty much the simplest form of um, logic you're going to get. It's, it's a lot simpler than working in something like base 10 or well decimal. So over here we have some um, logic gates. Um, you may recognize a few of these, you may not and there are one or two missing so I don't have uh, the imply gate or the not imply gate or nimplies and that's because they're just kind of a combination of the others uh, technically you could argue uh, exclusive or and exclusive nor are also combinations of the others but uh, for now we're just going to include them because they're widely used so I've got some labels on these gates so first of all we have a buffer gate which um, if you put an in whatever you input it'll give as an output so this gate we don't use in minecraft at all because it's rather useless technically you could consider a repeater as a buffer gate because you put in an input and it'll just give an output with a one tick one resident tick delay however it's you don't really use a buffer gate it's only used in a real life uh, because of um, other factors 
like um, current and stuff. So, so you do need a buffer gate sometimes in real life. Then we have a OR gate, and this is quite widely used. And I'll, I'll go into all the just the truth tables. And this basically means that um, we can put um, if we have zero, if we don't input anything, we we won't get an output. However, if we input just something, we'll get an output. So an AND gate will only activate if both the inputs are on. So if one of these is a zero and the other one is a one or a zero, it will always give out a zero. Then we have an XOR gate or exclusive OR. So this is similar to the OR gate, um, also known as an inclusive OR. However, if you put both, if, if both inputs um, are true, the output will be false because it's exclusive. So over here we just have a very simple inclusive versus exclusive or kind of Venn diagram. So this would be an inclusive or, or just a or as it's called. And this means, well, whenever we have an input, we are, even if both the inputs are on, we will always get an output. But with the exclusive or, it's only one input or only the other input. If both the inputs are on, which is represented by this middle circle over here, um, we won't actually get an output. So over here we've got some truth tables and what a truth table is is you give some you, you it lists the inputs and it'll list the output so for all these gates except the not gate we have two inputs um, you can also get multiple input gates but we'll just be covering two input um, logic gates in this video as well as one one input for the not gate so first of all we have the and gates and this is sometimes represented by a dot or a um, a star sometimes and this basically uh, means multiply. So zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero, one times zero is zero, and one times one is one. So this is basically logic, and we'll only get an output if both the A and B inputs are on. Now we have the inclusive OR, and this is also known as kind of like a, a plus. So zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, one plus zero is one, and one plus one is, well, two, but because, well, we're working only on one bit and uh, we're just working with um, true or false, uh, it, it has to be true. It, it can't be like, it, it can't be two because you only have true or false because it's um, Boolean logic. So now we have the exclusive or, and it has this kind of cross with a circle around its symbol and we have our inputs and our outputs. So zero and zero is a zero. Zero XOR one is a one. One XOR zero is a one. And one XOR one is a zero. Then of course the NOT gate, which is very useful. Um, it's represented by this bar symbol. Um, so sometimes say we have NOT A, it would be the A symbol or, or the letter A with a bar over it. So we, we just use this symbol for it. So if we put in a zero, we'll get out a one. And if we put in a one, we'll get out a zero. So it basically just flips um, the bit. So now we have the, well, inverted or not states of all our gates. So NAND, NOR, XNOR, and we also have a buffer gate. And these are just the exact same logic, um, but in reverse. So I'm not gonna cover too much of these in detail because, well, you can just use a typical logic gate and just stick a NOT gate at the end of it. But these are also quite used uh, these are also quite useful because they uh, lead to some interesting features. So for instance, um, in real life, the NAND gate as well as the NOR gate are functionally complete, which means that we can create any logic gate out of a combination of these um, logic gates. So in Minecraft, however, uh, the NOT gate is functionally complete, but that isn't the case in real life because of um, just just like problems with like um, voltages and stuff. It's, it just uh, NAND and uh, NOR gate are the only main ones that are functionally complete. So this is the XNOR gate, um, also known as a parity gate. And this will give an output if both the inputs are, well, the same or equal. So for instance, um, if A is the same as B, then we'll get an output. But if A is different to B, then we'll get an output. Then we won't get an output. So over here, A is zero and B is zero. And because these are the exact same, zero, well, false is the same as false we'll get a one or true as the output. And that's the same for down here, where A is true and B is true, we get true as the output, because it basically is parity, because they're the same. 
So now in Minecraft, how do we actually go upon Im implementing these logic gates? So the first thing um, we need to know in Minecraft is, well, redstone acts um, as like a digital system. So we can um, use Boolean logic uh, with redstone because we either get a one or a zero, uh, depending on the state if the redstone is on or off. And this is extremely useful because we can exploit this to create logic gates. So the most important component I would say in Minecraft is a redstone torch. And this is just purely because um, in Minecraft, the redstone torch acts as a not gate, but not only that, <laughs> no pun intended, it also is functionally complete. So this means we can create any logic gate we want out of this one um, logic gate. So of course, um, going back to the truth tables, if we input a zero, we will get out a one. And if we input a one, we will get out a zero. The next gate we will want to learn is an OR gate. And this is as simple as just a piece of wire like this. So say we have two inputs on an output like this, this is our OR gate. So the reason this works in redstone is because we will still get an output even if we have multiple um, powering the wire. It, it won't have any conflicting issues like real life where we have voltage because that's potential difference. And so in Minecraft, we can of course just use a piece of wire and it makes things a whole lot simpler. So this would be an OR gate. So now with this OR gate and these NOT gates, we can actually create multiple different logic gates um, using this. So for instance, if we want to build an, an AND gate, um, we can actually use two NOT gates like this. Um, I'm actually gonna build them on top of the torches. Then we can place a block like this, a piece of redstone, and this acts as a, an OR gate between the two um, redstone torches. So these this redstone torch will go into here as well as this one goes into here. Then we can place another redstone torch to act as a, a NOT gate. And now we have an AND gate. So as you can see, if we provide um, one input, so zero, one, um, because this torch turns off and no longer inputs into this redstone, but this torch is still on inputting because of course the one of the inputs is a zero, um, this redstone remains on, which means this torch remains off, meaning we get no output. So that's the same if we do it like this and it will only give an output if both of them are on. So this is effectively an AND gate. So that's an OR NOT as well as an AND gate. Now for the more complicated um, logic gate, an XOR gate, this is slightly more complicated because we only want, um, if, if both of them are on, we want an OFF. So this is gonna be a bit more complicated to implement. So now the XOR gate is slightly more complicated than just our normal logic gates like this. Um, as we can see, this is, well, what it is. However, there are a lot of ways to actually simplify this circuit. Um, in Minecraft, we have uh, redstone comparators, which use analog um, and actually allow us to um, turn the, well, use, by exploiting the analog system, we can actually get um, a digital XOR gate, as you can see. But um, this video is just um, for showing off how it would work in a digital system. So we'll show that off over here. So what we have is a number of logic gates. So the first one we have is an AND gate over here, which goes into a NOT gate, turning it into a NAND gate. Then we also have an AND gate over here. So this um, NAND gate goes into one of the AND gate inputs, but the other input is from an OR gate. So we have our input A and B, which um, go into the NAND gate as well as the OR gate and the outputs of these two logic gates go into our AND gate over here, which um, gives us the output. So for instance, if we just put um, one zero in, this um, NAND gate will give an output of one because um, the AND gate is of course giving an output of zero because both the inputs aren't on um, and the OR gate is giving an output of one which um, allows this AND gate over here to get a input of both one and one, um, meaning that it turns on and gives an output of one. Now, if we turn this one off and turn this one on, um, we still get a one because, well, the same thing happens. Um, but if we turn them both on, um, we actually get a zero. And this is because the AND gate will give out a zero because both the inputs are one, because, well, on a Normal AND gate, one and one is uh, one, but because we are, well, inverting this, 
um, it becomes a zero. So this is kind of how an XOR gate can be built. And there are many better ways of shrinking it down. I showed this off in my um, 10 XOR gate designs. And I definitely recommend shrinking it down and not building it out like this. This was just for um, demonstration. So these were the basic logic gates. Of course, you can get um, the, the inverted form of them by just adding a NOT gate like this. And for instance, um, the OR gate, we can turn into a NOR gate like this. Um, the AND gate, we can of course turn into an AND gate like this. And of course, um, you can simplify these down as well because, um, well, we can just do that. But simplifying will be a topic for another video in the future. So I hope you like this series and hopefully it helped out a bit. There will be um, hopefully more videos coming soon, uh, going into a bit more detail on specific components and stuff. Um, well, about combinational logic. But yeah, please like and subscribe and I'm out.